Yellowstone supervolcano eruption, the big spike in temperature the USGS missed. Well, we know that they don't have thermal monitors everywhere. They didn't have in the Norris Geyser Basin near Steamboat Geyser, and they replaced it on, from what I noticed, on May 19. So thank goodness they got a new thermal monitor there. That would help. Now, Yellowstone Volcano missed the big spike. This is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. The scientists spotted a big spike in the temperature of Steamboat Geyser. As we know, it's in the Norris Geyser Basin, and we have a tremendous activity. Steamboat has started erupting last March. It had 30 eruptions last year, and about 14, 15 this year up to now. It's just about one a week. But there's more activity there. Another geyser has started erupting, and that's the ledge geyser. It's called ledge because it's on the ledge of a, the side of a mountain, and it's really noisy because it's a uh, passage. Its opening is very narrow, and it whistles and uh, roars whenever it's uh, blowing off. So it's, it was revealed during a lecture on the Yellowstone supervolcano. As we know, it's located on the Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, between the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. The caldera, the volcano, is labeled a supervolcano because it has the capacity to inflict disaster on a global scale should a super eruption occur. We know that uh, it witnessed events of this kind 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 630,000 uh, years ago were the super eruptions, and then it had a serious eruption 70,000 years ago, and it has had 80 eruptions since those 70,000 years ago, and it's due for another one, because they figure just about every uh, uh, 6,000 years it has an eruption. Now, on August 1, 2013, the steamboat geyser erupted for the first time in eight years, surprising scientists and visitors. It's located in the Norris Geyser Basin, and it's described as the holy grail of geysers because no one knows when it will go off. It's supposed to be the biggest geyser in the world, and we know Yellowstone Supervolcano has 60%, uh, the, the National Park has 60% of the world's geysers. Jacob Lowenstein, who is in charge of monitoring Yellowstone for USGS, revealed a graph and it showed the increase in the temperature recorded on that day. He told students during the lecture at Menlo Park, California in 2014, in this case the graph is related to the eruption of steamboat geyser. It's Yellowstone's tallest and sends water over 300 feet into the air. Last summer, 2013, he was referring to steamboat erupted again. You can see that here from a temperature gauge that we have in the outlet right below the geyser. Dr. Lowenstein then revealed how, when analyzing what had caused the eruption, USGS scientists noticed a big spike in temperature. He continued, there and here is the time on the bottom, and right here is when there was a big spike in temperature a couple of hundred feet away from the geyser itself. And you can also find that about a mile away and an hour later, there was a big spike that went out through a steam gauge on Tantalus Creek. He revealed how the rise in temperature and pressure buildup caused the geyser to erupt for an hour before calming down again. And he added another neat thing that you can see with this particular diagram is that before the eruption, there were all these tiny little peaks, and these represent small eruptions of steamboat sending water maybe 50 to 20 feet into the air. As soon as the big eruption occurred, water came out for an hour. Then nothing came out of the geyser anymore. So all you see here is a nice flat curve that represents the daily variations in temperature. Dr. Lowenstein revealed during the same lecture how USGS scientists record a lot of earthquake activity more than a decade ago. In December 2008, continuing into January 2009, more than 500 earthquakes were detected under the northwest end of Yellowstone Lake over a seven-day span. So they had 500 earthquakes in a week. 
with the largest registering of a 3.9 magnitude. Dr. Lowenstein said, these are seismograms and they are from the south and north end of the lake. All of the data is for December 27, 2008 and come from Yellowstone Seismic Network. You have the time starting from early from top to the bottom. Every 15 minutes is represented by the black line, so four would be an hour. And these are all earthquakes. Every time you get a squiggle, you're looking at an earthquake. Dr. Lowenstein went on to reveal how, although the earthquakes were not particularly strong, they are still felt in the park. And he added, it was in December though, so there were not a lot of people around. But there were maybe 15, 20 people who were living near the lake at the time, and they felt it. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.